Hi, I'm Tom Dozier, and this video is talking about misophonia. It's about the language, the words we use to describe misophonia. One of the problems is that we typically describe triggers and how we feel and how the, the, we react to those sounds in common language, and the problem is it miscommunicates horribly. We say things like, I don't like that sound, or that sound really bothers me, or those sounds upset me, or they annoy me, or irritate me, or it distresses me, or it bugs me. And here's the problem. These are common words in the English language, and other people think they know what they mean. For example, I don't like that sound. Well, I don't like cooked turnips. Since I know what it means to not like something, I don't like cooked turnips, you don't like crunching, okay, get used to it. See, but I, I'm clueless. Or if you say, uh, that sound really bothers me. Well, flies bother me. So I know what it means to have something that bothers you, so I understand what it means for you to get triggered. No, I'm clueless still. So what I want you to use is the word trigger. That sound triggers me. The person's going to go, what? I don't know what you mean. Now we're starting to communicate because the person really doesn't know what a trigger is like. Or if you say, oh, that sound is one of my triggers or that is one of my triggers, then they're going to go, oh, okay, it's not something that you just dislike because we all have to deal with things that we dislike. It's a trigger and triggers are completely different than things that we dislike. When you're talking with a person about your misophonia that's close to you, you want to be careful to not attack the person. If you can make it impersonal a little bit, you'll be, you're better off. So remember the sound is detected by your lizard brain and your lizard brain is the one that assault, assaults you. It zaps you. It attacks you physically and emotionally. So avoid attacking the other person. Don't say, you make me so mad, I want to, or I hate it when you chew like that. You know, try something like, that sound really triggers me, right? Or I lose it when I hear that sound. See, you're talking about you and a sound, not the other person. You know, when I hear you're eating, it triggers me. Remember, it's a reflex, okay? The, the sound, the other person isn't physically hurting you. It's your lizard brain <laughs> that you want to be mad at. And describing misophonia in a way that others might understand it, here's what be, would be my suggestion. Call it a neurological condition or neurological disorder or a reflex disorder. It would sound something like this. I have a neurological condition called misophonia where certain common sounds trigger a reflex. The reflex is very unpleasant and it causes extreme negative emotions. In fact, getting triggered is like a physical and emotional assault. It's like getting slapped or poked with a stick or electrical shock or, or zapped with a cattle prod. Choose what, what, you know, what is, it, what is it to you? And you might say, when I'm triggered, I can't concentrate on anything else because of the extreme emotions. And I think that's a fairly accurate and understandable way to describe misophonia rather than, I hear those sounds and I get angry all the time. See, people don't really relate to that. Uh, but a reflex, where the reflex does it to you, people know what a reflex is. Now, talking about misophonia, sometimes I'm asked to write letters uh, of accommodation to employers or schools. And this is kind of how that would sound. Uh, it's my professional opinion that John has a neurological condition known as misophonia or selective sound sensitivity syndrome. Because of this condition, he experiences involuntary muscle reflexes, the tightening of the muscles, when he hears a trigger sound, and there are many sounds in his life that are trigger sounds, and then I give examples. And I also work with the individual to try to, to determine their, their physical reflex because it's, it's easier to understand misophonia that there's a physical component to it. So when, when the sound is detected by his autonomic nervous system, the ANS quickly constricts muscles in his neck and shoulders, or, or whatever the individual's physical reflex is. Uh, and if you don't think you have a physical reflex, watch the, the video on the initial misophonia reflex. 
And that this is much like he's receiving an electrical shock. This reaction makes it difficult for him to stay in such an environment where he is repeatedly receiving electrical shocks. And I think in that kind of condition statement, uh, people understand that it's a neurological condition and it's a reflex and I've had success with, people have had success with their schools and employers uh, making accommodations for them. So thank you for watching this video talking about misophonia. Uh, if it's valuable to you, please, uh, if you can, make a contribution to the Misophonia Treatment Institute. We'll use the money for education, misophonia awareness, uh, research, and development of treatments. Thank you very much.